This is a public challenge to leave Schreiber. Listen, mate, what's with you? The acting thing? Well, yeah, if you must, but you've proven where your real talent lies. You made one of the most delightful, little heart-filling and chuckle-inducing road movies I've ever seen. Nearly 10 years ago. Then nothing. Nothing. Naomi, give the big lug a shove and get him back where he belongs behind a camera directing movies as good as this. Please enjoy most premium cinematic realization and explore your inner Jew. Everything is illuminated. First time novelist Jonathan Safran Foer won the 2002 Guardian First Book Award with this thematically complex and stylistically multi headed beast of a book. It explores two time periods in parallel, is narrated by two different people, uses letters, diary entries, long extracts from other books, which are fictional, about a Jewish shtetl called Trochenbrod that doesn't exist but once did. There's an old man wanting to forget, an old woman wanting to remember, a young American wanting to understand his Ukrainian heritage, and a young Ukrainian wanting to be more American than the American. With the novel not even published, enter actor Liev Schreiber. Yes, that guy from Salt, Defiance and Installment 127 of X-Men Wolf something or other. And the testosterone-soaked Showtime series Ray Donovan, though this is 2002 before any of that happened. Schreiber had been working on a screenplay, sifting through the history of his own grandfather, a Jewish Ukrainian immigrant to America, when he's alerted to an extract from the upcoming novel in the New Yorker magazine. It's about some guy sifting through the history of his own grandfather, who, yeah, a Jewish Ukrainian immigrant to America. So the sensible Mr. Schreiber overturns his own effort, perhaps recognising a few too many similarities, and opts for having a crack at adapting Jonathan Safran Foer's piece instead. Collaborate, don't compete. Smart move. Hanging up his oversized rubber feet and ears from Middle Earth, Elijah Wood plays the fictionalised version of Jonathan, a mild-mannered American Jewish lad and a collector of memorabilia from multiple generations and multiple strands of his own family. He's a kind of closet historian, frocked up looking ready to attend a funeral at any opportunity. That opportunity comes when his grandmother dies and, oh please, no emails about spoilers. That happens very, very early in the film. Okay, so Jonathan decides to go on a pilgrimage to find the village where his grandfather lived in Ukraine prior to World War II. His guiding touchstone is a brooch, an insect encased in amber, fixed forever in time and just the start of a dozen cross-referencing metaphors about history, time, connection to place and purpose and identity across generations and oceans. Get the idea. The brooch belonged to a woman called Augustine, who supposedly assisted his grandfather long ago and appears in a photograph with Jonathan's grandfather, who bears a slightly more than passing resemblance to Elijah Wood. The fun, and trust me, this is a fun movie. Yeah, I know, a funny movie about Holocaust survivors? The fun begins with a raucous brass band arrival in a strange new world and the overly enthusiastic services by the second hero of the story, Alex. A linguistically challenged interpreter making straight answers to any question pretty well impossible. Jonathan is a fish out of water, gasping for air and anything he can clutch onto that feels familiar and calm, like that's gonna happen. Put these two in a car along with Alex's blind grandfather who insists on driving and an antisocial seeing eye dog and you have the makings of a thigh slap and bilingual road movie, Comedy of Errors. Off screen it seems Alex has thumbed a thesaurus to extinction, finding words to improve his English. His mangled rushlish makes for some brilliant getting to know you exchanges with Jonathan. High praise to Eugene Hutz as Alex. He was not really an actor. Schreiber knew of him more for his music as frontman of the gypsy punk group Gogol Bordello. Honest, I am not making this up. A band that looks like they were created to play drunken university gigs and give Eurovision a bit of a shake up as that way out wacky left of field long shot contender from Stan wherever, but they lost to an ex-Soviet reshuffle of borderlines. Discussing the music that might be used in the film, Schreiber suddenly saw Hutz in another light. How about giving the acting thing a go? And Hutz is surprisingly good. What might have deteriorated into total crass slapstick is just held back enough to remain truthful and honest while being incredibly funny. 
Grandfather is also a delight. In his 80s at the time of filming, Russian actor Boris Leskin had worked for many decades in Soviet films and later in the USA. His snappy retorts and stubbornness reveal a lovely comic sense and a much darker and sensitive undertone later in the film. Very tricky for Schreiber was directing not just Eugene Hutz, who came to the film lacking acting experience, but most of the other minor players as well. He was after people who were the characters they played rather than actors pretending to be the characters, that real dirt under the fingernails type of thing. As a result, he was having to work through an interpreter for not just the Russian, but also the Ukrainian dialects spoken by various characters. Schreiber was full of praise for Elijah Wood through the whole process. He said, he's very, very proficient and he's very professional. That was a bonus because I had to spend so much time with the other actors. I needed someone who could figure out what's going on and find their place. The road movie progresses with a number of wrong turns and confused directions, literally. But as Jonathan gets closer to his goal, the tone noticeably shifts from an almost documentary feeling as it travels through the countryside to a sort of stylized magic realism. In the middle of a vast field of sunflowers, the travellers meet an old woman living alone in a house, a place where time seems almost to stand still. Eventually, our now familiar characters stop fighting the odd events and energies of this strange land, and they fall into submission, attuning themselves to what's really in front of them. This is certainly the case for Alex, who perhaps has the most to learn on this very rigid search. By the time the many truths about the forgotten village of Trechenbrod and its inhabitants are uncovered, a prevailing calm sort of settles where once existed a lot of chaos. What's the message here? Perhaps the answers to questions can only be heard when people are quiet enough and still enough to listen for them. So why did this film fall between the cracks? My guess is the difficulty to sell a film to an American audience where half of it is in a foreign language, and who wants to see a funny movie about the Holocaust? Even with a hero from Middle Earth in the lead role and generally positive reviews, the film gross was under $4 million worldwide. For this beautifully crafted, constantly surprising, intelligent suitcase of fun. Ridiculous. Kunitz. Kunitz.